What's up, YouTube? This is Wendell, a.k.a. BitNative, with another edition of Work From Home Tech. There's always the use and the need for setting up a digital footprint for any new starting businesses. When you need to set up file services, point of sales, accounting, inventory management, uh, collaboration with groupware, project planning, actually even text messaging back and forth with some kind of rocket chat or other kind of online chat that's based in the business. If you need to do things such as email, all these services are essential boilerplate services that are needed for any starting business. Now in this video, we'll show you how to do a self-hosted version to include a lot of these back in features utilizing open source software that'll save you a lot of money. Uh, what we'll do is we'll set up Udo, which is going to provide a website to get a digital presence. It'll provide inventory management, point of sale management, project management, invoices, accounting, purchasing, as well as sales and marketing. Then we'll add to that another service which is Nextcloud, another very popular service, which will provide file sharing, groupware, video conferencing, document management. These two open source solutions also offer the ability to scale up in the cloud just in case the business grows or expands and needs to handle additional capacity or revenue based on the need of the business. Uh, these self-hosted services, again, self-hosted, will be hosted behind a nice VPN solution in WireGuard. WireGuard is going to provide very simple VPN services. It will be self-hosted and no pinhole port forwarding is required in your firewall. So you don't have to poke holes in your firewall to actually implement this VPN, which adds an additional layer of security. So we'll go through setting up WireGuard on an edge device, which will be in the cloud, but the requirements for the edge device in the cloud are minimal since it'll essentially be doing reverse proxy service and routing of the VPN traffic. Now we're gonna do this on something as simple as a $6 digital ocean box running the Caddy reverse proxy software. It's actually a very robust software, uh, open source again. It provides auto TLS certificates. It can be set up as a file server and again, the reverse proxy. We're talking simple one-liner reverse proxy solutions utilizing Caddy. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So we need to stop wasting time and get into it. So let's go ahead and get things started. We're gonna go ahead and start off by taking a look at the DigitalOcean where I get all my hosted services. The digital hosting that I use is provided by DigitalOcean. I have my work from home tech project here. Uh, what I'll do is create this droplet, select droplet, and there are multiple selections for operating systems, Rancher OS, Fedora, CentOS, Rocky. Uh, what I'm gonna do is go down here to the $6 droplet and select an NVMe version of the droplet that we're gonna create. Uh, I can select an SSD, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the NVMe. This droplet will be a marketplace, or basically I'll set up an app. You can take a look at the store to look at the whole list of the different applications that they have that you can just click and install and roll out, whatever that application may be. Uh, they have a pretty extensive list over at DigitalOcean. If you decide to go with DigitalOcean, there's a link in the description below. But first, we're going to go ahead and search for Caddy and select Caddy. If you want to see the details, you just click on the details button here and it gives you the information on what it's going to do and any initial steps that are required. Once you bring up the droplet or you do that initial login after creation. So in addition to that, we have to set up a couple other things for this droplet before we can fire it off. Uh, we want to 
set up uh, things like the actual location, which is New York for this instance. Also, secure shell keys. I have a few already pre-established in my account. Uh, I'll select all those, and then we can go down here and create droplet and get the droplet started, and it'll start spinning up the droplet in the cloud, and that's where we can uh, just sit back and wait here for this to create. All right, it looks like our droplet is good. We've got our droplet now, and this will allow us to go in and we can select the IP address. So I'll go ahead and I will copy this IP address because I want to get this started over on GoDaddy. GoDaddy is where I register my domains. So I will change the IP address here and add that to this throwaway mobile basics domain that I have. I will add the wildcard for the catch all of everything with the root domain. Um, in addition to that, we're going to add this subdomain of Nextcloud for the Nextcloud server. So I'll add the IP address there. We'll save this. In addition to that, we can go back over here to our droplet. Uh, so our droplet should be up and there's a couple of initialization steps that are occurring. Uh, I think it's called the, it's called the first run script that's going on in the droplet. But now we have our droplet and this is going to be part of our configuration. And, and let's go ahead and secure shell into it. It was 159. Two, three, 153.209. Say yes. So now we're in that droplet that has caddy. Um, what we'll do is first we will do a git. Looks like git's installed. Okay. Uh, what I want to do is do a sudo. Actually, we don't need sudo on this machine. Do an app update for the packages. And that's going to quickly do an update. And then looks like there's 205 packages that can be updated. Uh, one of the things that kind of occurs regularly when you first create a droplet is there will be services going on in the background uh, that will put a lock on your app file. So if I do an apt upgrade, I may get that the database is locked. The app database is locked. Yeah, it's locked. Uh, all right, so we'll give that a chance. What we'll do is I'll come here and we'll go to our self-hosted node. Uh, so this is a self-hosted node, which is essentially Starbuck. That's what the Metal as a Service came up with uh, from our last install. If you haven't had a chance to go back to that video, that'll also be a link down in there, the description below. There was the Metal as a Service. We fired up from Pixie Boot, a Think Center client. This is a brand spanking new one. Uh, that one was called Quick Pug. This one is Starbuck. Uh, we don't have anything on here. Looks like we have Git, but I don't think we have. Looks like we've got Ansible on here. So we'll go ahead and we'll go to Git clone. GitHub.com slash work from home tech metal as a service. And now we have metal as a service. And now we can do a Ansible play, playbook node setup. We'll do our initial node setup here on our node. All right, so here, I guess we had an issue on our Docker key. Uh, we're not gonna be using Docker, so I don't think that's gonna be an issue right now. So we've got our WireGuard playbook here. 
Uh, we still need to get over here on Caddy. There we go. All right, so now we should be able to do this update, and we we'll should see that we got some packages we need to update, but it should let us update them now or upgrade them. So let's do that. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now we've got our upgrade going. Our... Uh, So we'll we'll go ahead and wait and we'll speed this up. All right, so it looks like we've finished with updating our packages. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and do a real uh, quick reboot and then we'll go back in. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll do a git clone. Now we've got our packages, sorry, we've got our Ansible scripts. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run Ansible. If it's installed, it doesn't look like it's installed, so apt install Ansible. So we'll run this WireGuard configuration. The WireGuard configuration is basically going to create a boilerplate file. Uh, we'll have to go in and update that by hand. One thing you want to do is make sure you don't do anything to start up WireGuard while, while you're editing the configuration file. Because one of the settings that are put in there wg0.conf is this command right here, this save config true. So whenever you shut down WireGuard, it will actually go back and save the file based on the current settings. All right, so let's go through this with one at a time. So this, by default, is our IP address it puts in the file. We don't need that here because this is actually the VPN address that we want to utilize. So we're going to say 192.168.99, and we're going to say this is number one. Uh, we have a public key here. And what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy the public key for 192.168.99.1. So we'll go ahead and we'll copy that key. Uh, that's the default port. We'll leave that the same. And allowed IP addresses. We're going to modify that. Actually, we'll just leave that alone for now. We'll get back to that. So what we want to do is here on our self-hosted machine, we want to do the same thing. We want to do Ansible playbook. Actually, let's go ahead and exit and then go back in. There we go. Uh, go to metal as a service. I wanted my node settings to take effect. So what I'll do now is do an ans Ansible playbook WireGuard. We'll run that, let this install the WireGuard packages, create that boilerplate configuration file, and then we'll go in and configure it. Now, I have the public key from the droplet in my clipboard, so I should be able to update the file and paste it right in under the client settings. Uh, so this is updating the server. Hopefully the server has been updated, otherwise this may take a moment. <laughs> A few moments later. So here we go. We have our configuration file. We'll 
update that configuration file. WireGuard, and it will be wg0.conf. And once again, bruh. All right. So here we have the IP address for this interface, which again, we want to remove that. We want to call this one 192.168.99.2 because the droplet was 99.1 for the VPN. So this will be 99.2 for the VPN. We can leave this port the same config file true uh, and this is where we wanted to remove that and we wanted to paste the public key for the droplet right there uh, these public keys are generated using the private keys so these config files you can actually reuse these config files depending on what you're doing uh, so the one thing we need to keep in mind is when we talk to our droplet, the droplet will actually be on the internet and you need to put in an endpoint. Two oh nine. That's our droplet. There's our port for our droplet. And then the loud IP address is going to be that one. And then of course it's going to be 99. Oops. So 192.168.99.1 for the DigitalOcean droplet. And then two this is the interface we're using on this machine. And then it's going to access it via the internet address as its endpoint through this port. Now this last setting we have here is what we're going to do is we're going to say persistence keep alive to keep the tunnel open because we we are actually hosting our server, the web server and Nextcloud on the machine inside of our own internet. So people will be coming from the outside accessing it. So if we don't keep the tunnel open, it won't be able to access inside our internet because if you remember in the beginning when I said, we're not putting any holes in our firewall. So we wanna keep that tunnel open uh, by communicating with it. It's gonna be a little bit more chatter, but it's not anything significant. Uh, with a few UDP packets going over. So this looks like we have a basic decent config file on our self-hosted machine. Let's go back over. Actually, we want to get our public key. So what we're going to do is get our public key of our self-hosted server. Copy that. And now we go to our digital ocean droplet and we can add the public key for that here. So let's walk through this again. So the local interface on the digital ocean droplet for the VPN is 192.168.99.1. There's our private key, there's our listening port, there's the save config file we've discussed. Here's the peer, which we're going to have this public key. And then we need to, essentially, this is gonna be useless because there's no, there's no hole in the firewall, so we can literally delete that, but we need that VPN address of the actual machine that our web server's on. So that'll be 192.168.99.2. And this keep alive, we don't really need that, so we'll leave that alone. And what we'll do is we will write this out. And there we have that. Now, a basic command to just see the status is just WG. And it's 
didn't return anything because it's not up and running. So what we want to do is we want to do a WG WireGuard quick. We want to say up WireGuard zero for the interface. So there, that brings it up. Now the WG, we can see that it is up. There's the public key, uh, private keys hidden. So we want to just make sure. So it's OBI uh, L4 equals. We want to go back over here. And we want to just take a look at that config file real quick. Now, if you look and see the the peer the peer public key is different, so we want to change that. Let's go ahead and go back over here. We'll change that real quick. So our peers, this guy, and we want to change that to this. So that's the public key of our DigitalOcean droplet, and there's the endpoint, and that's going to be the VPN address. Um, I'm going to go back, just make sure that this one is also correct once we start this up. All right, so now we can check, see, nope, it's not running. So we'll go ahead and do WG quick and fire this up, uh, up WG zero. So now we have that up and now we can do a WG with the sudo. And now we can see, all right, so we can, I can tell already we have a problem. FMX and X8 equals. So it looks like the public key is correct. 192.168.99.2. Uh, private keys there for 99 so that looks correct let's go back over here just double check uh, go back into the config file private key that's the address there's the oh I know what's wrong all right so one thing I forgot to do was I forgot to open the firewall port. If you go to the firewall, you see there's no open port. So what I'll do here is you have firewall allow um, 51.820 UDP. So now we've added our firewall rules. Uh, there we go, TCP4. TCP 6. Now we should be able to check our client again to see. Now you can see we're actually sending and receiving traffic. So I should be able to ping 192.168.99.1 to ping the droplet. And you see we we're able to ping. So now we've got a VPN channel established. So we can actually communicate. So you can see right there, the address is configured. Now what we want to do is we want to go to caddy file.
and we want to configure this, we want to say mobile basics dot shop. We don't need a actual root directory entry here. This won't be a file server. Uh, what we will do is we will set up the reverse proxy. And what we'll do is we will set it up for one ninety two one sixty eight ninety nine two are self hosted eighty sixty nine is going to be the odo port odo port that we need and what we're going to do is we're going to say and we will Set this up for next cloud. So we've got Nextcloud Mobile Basics dot shop. We've got the default root Mobile Basics dot shop. And what we'll do is we'll change this to just the address. And when we install Nextcloud, it's going to default to port 80 and 443. Uh, but when you do the default install of Odoo, it's going to install to 8069. So that's why I've kind of configured these this way. So what we'll do is we'll save that. Now, we're not going to restart Caddy yet because we don't want anyone trying to poke holes in there yet. So let's go back over to our self-hosted solution. And what we need to do now is we need to go over to Odoo. But if you're running in Ubuntu, this is the quick way to do it. So you have to come in here and you have to install Postgres first. So we'll go here, we'll do this. Install Postgres. And then what we'll do after that is we'll install Odoo. We go back over to Odoo and it's asking a question. We'll confirm that. And we'll go over to Odoo and what it's going to do is going to have you set up some stuff for the package repo. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to SU to root and then we're going to set that up and then we're going to set up the package list here and then we're going to get this last one where we actually do the update and install the Odoo package. So this will pull down everything we need for the 15.0 version of Odoo. And then that should fire it up and it should be functional. We'll test that out real quick. And then after we do this, we'll move on to Nextcloud and we'll install Nextcloud. All right, so now we're back inside of our Starbuck self-hosted Odoo servers thus far. Um, what we'll do is we'll do snap install.
That's going to go and it's going to do the installation. So now we have our snap package of Nextcloud install. What we're going to do is we're going to do curl localhost so you can see we're getting HTML spit out at us we'll do a curl localhost 8069 and you can see we're getting some more HTML thrown at us so it looks like our web services are running and we're going to find out here when we do a system control reload caddy. So now we've reloaded caddy. And we're going to go ahead and give it a shot and see what happens. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to see if we can get to our basic mobilebasics.shop Hey, now it looks like we're propagated through. We've got our Odoo here. So let's go ahead and configure this guy. So now we're creating our database on that self-hosted machine for Odoo. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and TTPS. There we go. All right. So now we've got Mobile Basics, we're going to go ahead and say work from home tech. And we will uh, put in our password here and get that going. So now we've got Odoo up and running. You can see it's accessing it via Mobile Basic. Here you can go in and you can install all your services for the invoicing, customer relation management, everything you need here. Uh, one of the first things you probably want to do is you want to set up the web service to get your, your basic web service up and running. We'll just go ahead and say blog for an example that we're going to use here. Uh, we'll say blog as if we're going to use this for our work from home tech uh, to host our videos, list the videos, provide technical information. Uh, that's going to pop up and it's going to give you a little walkthrough to kind of set up some of the initial configurations of the website. So ready to build your perfect website? Let's do it. Uh, we'll say a business website. Did I do a website? Yeah, we'll say, then we'll say technology. Technology. Let's see, we'll say mm, 
nothing specific, I guess. We'll just do Vent Technology Service with the objective to uh, inform customers. We'll say this is our theme. We'll say we want About Us page. We want e-learning page. We want news is already there. Uh, we want to set up events for whatever videos we may want to. All right. And then we want to get a theme. What theme do we want? Let's go ahead and we'll select this theme. So that's going to go ahead and start creating that. It's building it out. Now we can go over to next cloud and we can install the recommended apps. And that'll go through and install all the recommended apps for Nextcloud. Uh, we're essentially up and running. We're just doing some initial configurations to make sure it's at least password protected and locked down. Uh, that is hosted on our domain that we just created from GoDaddy. The edge device that's handling all of our reverse proxy traffic is Caddy, which is on DigitalOcean. That's a $6 per month droplet. Uh, very inexpensive. Uh, it is accessing our internal network without punching any holes in our firewall. We're good to go there. And we've got... All the services we identified at the beginning of this video ready to be configured, set up, and employed for your business. So if you haven't had an opportunity to subscribe to the channel, the next videos we'll get into actually looking at these free open source services and configuring them the proper way. So if you see here, you can see we have a boilerplate website, WYSIWYG, ready to go, configure this guy. Um, the way you need to, we'll just go ahead and click save for now. And we'll go back over to next cloud. looks like next cloud is wrapping up. So this is going to give you your file collaborations. Uh, here we go with next cloud. looks like it's good to go. Uh, again, next cloud, mobile basics dot shop. Here we go. Initial setup. Go to the App Store. Uh, it's got desktop as well as mobile applications to support. Uh, and then we start using it. So now we've got our initial Nextcloud setup. What do you want to do here is probably go over here to Apps and start configuring all the apps that you want. Uh, there are definitely a lot of different apps you can install. Some are paid, some are free. Again, as I said, you can scale this up to host all this in the cloud. Next, next cloud can be hosted in the cloud as well as Odo can be hosted in the cloud. Depends on what your budget is, depends on what your customer base is on what you need to do. But that's essentially the configuration of a digital footprint for your new business organization that we've walked through right here on Work From Home Tech. Stay tuned. More video, more content to come. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you got comments, leave comments. If you want to see something special on here, also leave comments there. Let me know. You can reach us on Reddit. You can reach us on Twitter. You can reach us on uh, Instagram as well. Stay tuned. Have a great day.